Hey guys, welcome back to today's episode of Bobby V's or BV's BV's Talk Show. Okay, we uh, to the topic we're covering today is how do the three true outcomes affect your teaching as a coach or instructor? And before we get into our answer of our topic, uh, we're going to ask our producer who brought this topic up to us to explain to us what the, th the three true outcomes are and why uh, we want to cover this topic today. So Virg, can you take that away for us? Of course. The three true outcomes are the home run, the strikeout, or the walk. The reason that I brought this up as a topic is because it's become such a statistical anomaly at the highest of level that all we're seeing, and I don't have the exact stat offhand of like anywhere between 33 to 50 percent of the time, those are the three things that you're going to see in the baseball game over and over again. So and this isn't to throw a Joey Gallo or guys who hit home runs at a prolific rate and are walking and striking out a ton, or Mark Reynolds is an even better example, where you would just see 35 home runs, a ton of walks, and 215 Ks. It was a good season. You paid him seven and a half million to hit those 35 bombs. Now take that with a grain of salt and say these kids who are watching this ball game or watching different ball games, watching players do this, watching players walk or swing wildly out of the zone trying to hit home runs, how you teach them, make sure their mindset's in the right place as they're growing, as they're trying to learn, and you have this awesome 10 or 11 year old who's got two more years of Little League and all he's doing is trying to hit home runs because he's bigger than everyone else. The fence is small, but his swing's out of whack and he's all over the place. How you rein that in? That's why I brought this up. So, looks like Frank is ready. He's very well spoken. That was a great job. Nice Thank job. you very, very much. Appreciate it. But I'm a little old school, so I'm not a big analytic guy. I understand them. I think uh, analytics have been brought to the game by people who aren't guys who have experienced many times in the batter's box and they're trying to figure it all out mathematically. I do get what you're saying and there there are some answers. So here's, when I coach kids, I don't really think that I coach specifically based on those outcomes, but I'm going, you don't run, I'm gonna give you a high five. You walk, I'm gonna give you a steal sign and if you strike out, I'm sending you home. That's, <laughs> How's that? Keep it simple. I like <laughs> it, a lot, a lot. No, maybe not. It depends on how many times you strike out. Well, I'll take the strikeout, I guess, specifically, and I'll take that as a perspective of teaching pitching and not so much a hitting perspective. But, you know, you see these kids kind of, oh, I struck out 12 guys. Like, yeah, you threw like 95 pitches through, you know, six innings, whatever it was. That math doesn't work out at all. Don't question me, Virgin. But, you know, instead of being a guy who pitches to contact and fills up the zone and gets an out on the first, second, or third pitch of an at-bat versus throwing seven, eight, nine pitches in a batter, and then that pitcher will last a little bit longer. So I guess, you know, trying to uh, disillusion the kids, the pitchers away from strikeouts and really inhibit and, and encourage pitching to contact is huge. Um, and then again, as a hitter, you know, I we don't want to see, you know, striking out, especially looking more specifically. Yeah. You know, you want to be up there. A lot of guys, we talk about that. They work on their swings all winter and they're all ready to go and they're good hitters. They get out and they don't swing the bat until they get two strikes. And now all of a sudden you're hitting the pitcher's pitch, you know. So in terms of like avoiding a strikeout, I always like to talk about being aggressive early, getting your pitch early and getting out there. And for more information on that topic, you can go to the Ram 3 show podcast. Yeah. Good shape of the podcast there, man. We're learning. All right. Yeah. So do we cover that well? Do you think or the, we talked about the home um, run a little bit, the strikeout, the walk? Um, just going off that, I guess I could talk a little bit about like the mental side of that. You know, especially with some of the younger guys, I try to when you're talking about strikeouts, right? We want to, you know, either make an adjustment or we want to be aggressive. I don't want to. You know, as me, if I'm coaching, I don't want to see a guy up there and just keep looking at strike three. You want to be aggressive, you want to protect, because, you know, more often than not, you don't want to leave it in an umpire's hands, you know. I'd like to talk about the protect word for a second, by the way, because we talk about this a lot, and I hear this so much. What, yeah. what do you mean by protect? So, when I say protect, in my mind, I think it's putting yourself in a good position in the box where you can you know, reach a pitch that might be a little bit off the plate on the outside corner, or you can get to a pitch in the inside corner, not sacrificing being aggressive, but just being able to protect all corners of the plate. Yeah, so actually being be more aggressive. Yeah, actually so being more, more expanding. Being, a yeah, maybe expanding a little bit, but meaning, you know, you're protecting against, you know, that call that could be a ball off or mm -hmm. a ball in. You're not allowing yourself to get beat. You're being ready and prepared to win that at bat. 
Makes sense. I don't mean Although, just fouling it off. I don't yeah. mean, you know, you want to stay aggressive. You, if you get a good pitch to hit or a pitcher makes a mistake, you want to be able to get after that. Yeah. There's a lot of guys in the big leagues that are changing their, their loads and yeah. approach with two strikes. And what do you think about that? I think it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's hard enough to hit with, with one consistent move but, and to change it, but they're doing it. And guys are having great success. And I think if it's something that you work on more and more and there's a little less moving with two strikes, a little more consistency in your probability in the game of not being probable and trying to hit the ball at park, which I'll get back to my real answer, but it's, it's pretty cool. If you're that good and you can do that, that's pretty awesome. And I think that kind of goes back to at an individual level, you know, if you're thinking about the two-strike adjustments, because I've played with kids that, you know, will get wide in the box or they'll get on top of the plate and kind of change their whole stance and it works. It works for them. But then more often than not, I play with guys that, you know, they'll tweak maybe a little thing, but they're more conscious of up in their brain about how they're getting pitched or how this pitcher's been throwing people, and that helps them succeed rather than physical changes. Yeah, expanding the strike zone. Because the the hitting's are already hard. The hitting's already hard, and if you're changing the way you set up after taking all these reps, it's... We, we played a team out in baseball heaven one year, and the coach vocally to the whole, everybody in the stands could hear, two strikes, he'd say, move up to the plate and cut the plate in half. Yep. Every at bat when he had, when his kids had two strikes, he just told the pitcher, "You can't get me out inside. I'm taking away that outside pitch right now." And I've I have I've had coaches that that's what they've preached is with two strikes you choke up, get wide on top of the plate, eliminate everything on the but, outside. Okay, so you know what I I made the comment a little kid can't do that. A, kid, no, a no. little kid can't have two swings. That's no. hard enough. But that's, th these major league guys are doing mm -hmm. so much. Back to the the home run walk strikeout. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't love where the game is right now. I love watching home runs. They're cool. I love the power that these guys have. But the strikeouts, I mean, when you compare the numbers of guys a few years ago who also hit a lot of home runs but didn't strike out this crazy amount of times, I'm not a big fan of it. And we just did these numbers together. We did these studies. They're talking about launch angles. If you are working on that launch angle and trying to hit the ball in the air and hit it far, but you don't have a certain exit, exit velocity off your bat, it's a fly ball to the outfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to know the math between your exit velocity and your launch angle to hit the ball over their heads and not be an out. And I just think teaching a, a good swing where the ball is matching, the bat is matching the plane of the downward angle of the ball, that's the tee. To try to, to change your angle to, to launch the ball, that's so hard for the young kids. And obviously walking is a great thing in the game, yeah. especially if you have speed. Even if you don't have speed, it puts pressure on the defense and having a good eye. But, you know, I, I think any of these outcomes or something that you don't really have to deal with unless they're really, really happening a lot. If a kid's striking out over and over and over and over, you have to analyze what's going on. Why is he striking out? Is it the kid that you're talking about that's trying to hit a home run every time? Or is he just have bad mechanics and he's nervous and he's swinging at everything? Kid's walking a lot, but he's striking out every other time because he's not swinging. You know, it's, it's I think almost any question that you ask in relation to this, it all depends on the kid, the mm -hmm. situation, the opponent. But I do think the, the the launch angle thing is a little out of hand, especially all these young kids. Well, like you said, you figure it out. You want like if someone's going to hit a home run, you want it to be a result of a good swing, good mechanics on a, on a good pitch to hit, rather than somebody changing their launch angle and trying to hit a home run with you know limited success. Like it could happen, it might not. You want it to be a result of good mechanics and the work you put in, you know, rather than. Um, changing your launch launch angle or trying to think home run more than get on base or making contact, you know. And of those three outcomes, there's no doubt about it, the home run is the most fun. Yeah, it's sexy. It's sexy. <laughs> it chicks the long ball. They do. <laughs> you know, but uh, they don't like strikeouts either, so. Very true. That's all I got. All right, so that was today's episode of the BB Talk Show. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, look forward to getting out some more content for you guys soon. Have a great day. Thanks to Paul and Rich for joining us on that one.